my golden retriever has some pretty big flaws, and I hate to say it, but they're mostly my fault. He gets anxious in public, so it's hard to take him places, but it could have been avoided if I didn't make this big mistake when he was a puppy. I didn't socialize him enough. I didn't get him used to the sights, smells, animals, and people that he sees in regular life as an adult dog. I didn't do it for two reasons. The first is that I didn't really know what to do. And the second is because of a big myth that made me think it was unsafe. Socializing your puppy is one of the most underrated tips for raising a calm, confident dog. When you first get your puppy and you're doing research on how to raise them, everybody talks about biting, potty training, and their endless energy. And those are important. But now that my golden is an adult dog and has mastered or grown out of those things, they're not really that important anymore. But I'm still feeling the effects of not socializing my dog enough. Many people think that socializing your dog is letting them play with other dogs so that they get along with them. That's part of it, but not all of it. Socializing is getting your dog comfortable around everything that they may experience. Other dogs, other animals, people of all shapes, sizes, and colors, and places and objects. Here's what I wish that I had done. I wish that I had helped him have more positive or at least neutral experiences with the world when he was a young puppy. I wish that I had taken him to parks, stores, or coffee shops to let him smell and be around people, cars, and other noises in everyday life. If I had done that, it probably would have helped him be less anxious in public today. And we're in the stage of life when we're about to have kids, and all of our friends and siblings are having kids. Our golden is pretty good around children, but he is a little skittish. So I wish that we had gone to playgrounds and let him watch kids run around and scream and be crazy and help him know that that's normal and not something to be afraid of. Now, many people might hear this and think you can't take your dog out before they've had all their vaccinations. And that's kind of true, but it's not the whole truth. You can still take your puppy to the dog park, but not in the way you're probably thinking. You can park your car next to the park, open the window, and let your puppy see, hear, and smell the other dogs. One of my favorite trainers calls this dog park TV. You can also take them to stores, but just not let them get into things. If you're in a Lowe's or a Home Depot, you can put a towel in the cart and let them ride around and see, smell, and hear the noises of being in a public place. You can also drive around in a crowded parking lot with the windows down and let your pup experience all of the smells, sights, and sounds that a busy parking lot has. Of course, you'll want to be holding them or have them on a short leash so that they can't jump out of the car. And you can go grab coffee or ice cream, sit outside, and hold your puppy in your lap and let them get the experience of being out in the world without them sticking their noses into things that could get them sick. One thing that we did do right in raising our golden retriever puppy is taking him to puppy kindergarten. Many trainers or even pet stores run a puppy kindergarten where you can learn the basics of raising and training your puppy. But maybe the most important part of puppy kindergarten is letting your pup get the opportunity to play with other puppies. The trainers require all puppies to be up to date on their shots in these classes, so it's a safe environment for your pup to learn to play nicely with other dogs. They'll also learn to bite less by playing with other dogs, and we'll talk more about biting in a little bit. These are all things you can do even if your puppy isn't fully vaccinated. They'll help your pup experience the world outside of your home at a time in their life when they're open to new experiences and are still figuring things out. It'll help them understand that the world isn't a scary place to be afraid of. I didn't do this as my puppy was growing up, but I really wish I did. We're homebodies, and we just sat in the house and took him out to his one's potty spot a few times a day. Now that he's an adult, we sometimes want to take him to get ice cream or a beer with us, or take him on vacation, but he gets anxious sometimes, so it's not always fun. We're having to play catch up now and show him the world isn't scary, and it is working, but it would have been a lot easier if we had started when we first got him. And if you're thinking that your puppy could never sit still in your lap at a coffee shop or sit still in a shopping cart, here's where my next regret comes into play. I wish that I had given my puppy more mental exercise. Like all golden retriever puppies, my golden had tons of energy as a puppy. Our entire day was built around how do we get him enough exercise to wear him out. If we didn't wear him out enough, he would cry in the crate, chew up our carpet, bite our fingers, or run around our small apartment being a total menace. But we were going about it totally wrong. We were only thinking about physical exercise, not mental exercise. 
This might sound counterintuitive, but dogs can get just as worn out using their brains to solve a puzzle toy as using their legs to run around the yard. Plus, if your puppy isn't fully vaccinated, then your options for exercise may be a little limited. And not to mention, mental exercise doesn't put any stress on their fragile, growing joints like physical exercise does. I've now learned how to give my dog mental exercise, and he's a lot calmer, and we are a lot happier. I wish I'd discovered this earlier, but hopefully it'll help you. Here are my three favorite ways that I like to give my dog mental exercise. The first is through training. When you're training your puppy, they're using their brains to figure out what it is that you want them to do. And more importantly for them, they're trying to figure out how to earn that treat in your hand. It's hard work for them, and you'll be surprised at how tired they are after even just a few minutes of training. And of course, puppies don't have long attention spans, so you want to keep training sessions to just a few short minutes so that they're fully engaged and having fun. If you train them for too long, they may start to find training boring or start getting things wrong and start building bad habits. Training your puppy is also good because you can do it at home. You don't need much extra room or equipment, and you can do it while they're not fully vaccinated. We'll talk more about training in a little bit, but the next way I like to give my dog mental exercise is to give him puzzle toys. Puzzle toys are toys that require your puppy to use their brain to earn a treat from a toy. My Golden's favorite puzzle toy is a frozen Kong. You can make a frozen Kong by soaking your puppy's kibble in water for 10 to 15 minutes, filling up a Kong with the soaked kibble, adding a little bit of peanut butter in the hole to get them excited about it when you give it to them, and then freezing it. Your pup will love licking it and chewing it and trying to get the frozen kibble out, and it's a great mental workout for them. This is an especially good toy to give them if they're in their playpen or their crate and you want to get them to settle down. I'll leave a link in the description for where you can get Kongs for your puppy. My next favorite way to mentally exercise my pup is to go on snafaris or walks specifically designed for him to sniff a lot. A dog's primary sense is his sense of smell, while a human's primary sense is our sight. So when you take your dog out somewhere they can smell as much as they want, it's kind of like giving your child an iPad and letting them watch as much YouTube as they want. They'll be totally in the zone and absolutely love it. When we do walks like these, I put a harness with a front clip on them put him on a 20-foot leash, and take him to either a park, an empty business park, or an empty church. The long leash lets him sniff way more than if he was on a regular 6-foot leash, and the harness with a front clip helps him not pull so hard. I started doing these walks with my golden retriever a few months ago, and they've helped so much for him not being so crazy and getting his energy out. Of course, you may not want to do this with a young puppy who hasn't been fully vaccinated, but for older puppies, it's a great way to give them some exercise that's fun and safe for their joints. I'll drop a link in the description to my favorite harnesses and long leash for you. Getting your puppy's energy out with mental exercise will definitely help them behave better. But here's another regret I have regarding my puppy's bad behavior. I wish I had more patience. Your puppy is going to be the cutest thing in the world but they're certainly not going to be a little angel all the time. Golden Retriever puppies are hard to raise. They're extra bitey because they were literally bred to use their mouths and pick up gunned down birds. And they have tons of energy because they were bred to help hunters out in the field all day. And they love humans so much that they want to jump up on us and lick our faces. These are all normal puppy behaviors, but they can drive you nuts as a new puppy owner. Training your pup and giving them enough mental and physical exercise will definitely help set them up for success, but you're still going to need a lot of patience handling your puppy through all of their crazy puppy phases. Of course, it'll be more than worth it. My golden is currently snoozing on the floor underneath me as I record this, and he's an absolute angel these days, but I do wish I was more patient with him when he wasn't such an angel. Speaking of puppies misbehaving, this next regret I have would have saved me a lot of headaches. I wish that I had gotten professional help from a trainer sooner. Here's a specific example for you. You can see in this clip that my golden didn't want to give up the ball when he was a puppy. I thought it was cute at the time, and I thought maybe he would grow out of it, but he didn't. So playing fetch with him and teaching him to drop a tennis ball has been extremely hard. I really wish that I had talked with a professional trainer sooner before he had months of practicing this bad behavior. But I've got two pieces of good news for you here. One is that we did a study of 600 golden retriever owners where we asked them lots of questions about raising their dog. One of the questions was, if you have hired a professional dog trainer, did it help? 
95% of golden retriever owners who hired a trainer said yes, it did help. So you can be encouraged to know that hiring a professional trainer works. And the second piece of good news is that there are lots of professionals available for you, either in person or online. I've hired trainers both online and in person, and I've had great experiences with both. I also partnered with some dog trainers, veterinarians, and breeders to write the Golden Retriever Puppy Handbook, which gives you a game plan for how to prepare for and raise your Golden Retriever Puppy. It'll help you avoid all of the regrets and mistakes that I made and help you raise your wild Golden Retriever Puppy into the dog of your dreams. I'll drop a link for you to check it out down in the description. And as you saw in the video of my puppy not wanting to drop it, he was a goofy, gangly, bouncy puppy. Which leads us to my next regret that I'm still annoyed with today. I wish I had taken more videos. Pictures are amazing, but they just don't capture the adorable way your puppy hops and stumbles around. Before you know it, there'll be a big athletic dog, and you'll forget the way they used to bounce around. So take lots of videos and capture all of their sweet, goofy phases growing up. This isn't a regret, but one thing I didn't expect with my golden retriever is how much I would love him. I am totally obsessed, and if I had to guess, you are too. But if you want to know if your golden feels the same way about you, watch this video for 10 signs your golden retriever loves you too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.